sun. It's still February 17th. I just got back from um, post office to pick up my earthing kit. <laughs> so I, I thought it was going to be this big old box. <laughs> I'm taking my wagon. <laughs> and it's really light too. <laughs> like it's small. It's small. I was surprised because I I, I I thought it was going to be bigger, but I guess not. <laughs> I'm excited to open that up just to see. Um, <laughs> it's funny because I'm all in my wagon thinking it was going to be huge. <laughs> it's not being huge. Um, but yeah. So, um... As I was getting ready this morning, it's still February 17th, so I was reflecting on the dream a little more, sitting with it. And the, <laughs> the thing is, I, I, I think I'm a little more shocked at, at my response, waking up. I'm more shocked at, at compared to the dreams I had recently and the one dream at the beginning of the year where it was more of um just the the knowing I guess what I saw where we were um, doing our thing, and my mom and my sister, like it was everything that I wanted, right? And my mom and my sister were getting to know him, and he was getting, and his mom was there too. I remember his mom and his sister were there too. And um, this, and then it shifted to the scene where my ex and him were t talking. I could feel my ex's energy, like he was nervous and anxious about meeting him. But I was letting them do their thing, like I wasn't meddling. It's like, okay. You know, they'll figure it out. And even when we came back home, to our home, I realized we didn't talk. <laughs> there was there was no talking. In 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 that dream, really. There was just this knowing. There was just this knowing. We didn't have to talk. And then the second dream, the next night after that, where it's his sister, where I'm I'm laying down. That's what I started thinking about. I'm like, his sister's in this scene, the dream again, the one last night. And I don't, I, I, I mean, I don't remember much of it now, but what sticks out, what stands out the most is his sister kind of like it was similar to that first that second dream where she's the one that's telling me the truth she's she's the one that's telling me like that she can't believe I didn't know that he had more feelings for me than what he led me to believe that he liked me more than what he led me to believe I imagine we didn't care in that dream, I didn't care. I was just so happy. I was laying down. And I could see my belly. So I don't know if I was pregnant in that dream. And then even when he came to me, he didn't say anything. Like, like it was all communicated through his sister. And that's what stood out, again, as I was sitting with it a little longer and with this particular dream. That it was his sister that was reassuring me, I guess. 
reassuring me. And he was trying to speak, right? Trying to share, but it would, but it was, he had to turn into a spider to come into my ear to tell me, <laughs> to, to tell me what he was trying to tell me. And I, I don't even remember exactly what it was that he was saying, but it was the feeling that I got was that he was trying to speak. But what's, what stands out the most is that it's his sister buffering. It's his sister buffering. Like she's, she's reassuring me. But she's a buffer. That, that's what it felt like. And I guess it makes sense. You know, when, I mean, I remember what it's like to not be able to speak, you know, when, you, when you're trying to find your voice, when you're trying to be honest, it's hard, it's hard. But what that stood out the most was, like, his sister's there again, and she's the one that's providing more of the reassurance. And it triggered a memory, it triggered a memory for me. It triggered a memory. Mm. A couple memories, actually. Um, one, where I, I don't remember. I think it was the first time I met her. I think it was the first time I met her. And um, I don't. I don't remember if it was after we had come back from Palm Springs or if it was when we were coming back from the, where, Solvang. And she made a comment when she met me. She made a comment, she, oh, what did she say? She said, um, he doesn't do this, he doesn't, uh, Cause, uh, because he had take he had come <laughs> lo, lo secuestré <laughs> like I, I took him away <laughs> for the weekend <laughs> for the oh, overnight <laughs> I had taken him away right I invited him I'm like come with me come with me to Palm Springs or something and let's go on a trip <laughs> and and she she said that he doesn't do this she she said something alluded something like that like he doesn't do this this isn't this isn't like him like he doesn't he doesn't do this he doesn't go out and and she was kind of like teasing him like what does she say like he doesn't go out he stays home she's like we try to get him to go out but he doesn't he stays home and i remember <laughs> when she was saying that he looked down he was on the side and he looked down but I, I remember him saying that it's because they they tend to go like why like drinking and he can't drink he used to but he he can't anymore because they found a it's like a birth defect or something in his liver and, and had he not had like that intense moment where he had to go to the ER after drinking they wouldn't have found it and so he has to be careful for what he eats in terms of the alcohol content and stuff like that, just stuff, you know, to, to ease up on his liver, I think, I think it's liver. But she, that's, that's the memory that got triggered, that when she said, like, he doesn't usually do this, <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't take off, right? And he's all about home and work. And then, so it wasn't, like, his normal, like, it's not what he usually does. That, that's what got triggered. But his sister was there still, like, buffering. I, I think that's what it stands out the most, is that. Just reassuring me. And that's the part that I'm needing to sit with. Because then it, it triggered another memory. Bef 
It was the day that I not met him, but the the it was the the morning after we first spoke on the phone. It was the morning because I recorded I recorded about it. I recorded about it. I recorded myself. That morning, it was the morning after he and I had spoken for the first time on the phone. And that was when, when the light came back. The, the, the light, the perp, the blue, it was blue then, I think, bluish light. But the songs, I remember, I remember that morning. I remember the songs that were playing as I was getting ready. It was back to back songs. <laughs> and I remember saying, in that video, I'm like, the songs aren't going to speak for him. <laughs> the songs aren't going to speak for him. But I was referring it to someone else. I thought it was someone else then. But, but the songs, the songs, I remember. It was like the songs were speaking for him. <laughs> that, that was the other trigger, the other memory that popped up for me. So, yeah, I, I think that's what I've been sitting with the most is just how how I'm I'm reacting to it, how it's making me feel. Like I I thought I would be a little more, you know, like giddy or excited or. But the thing is, and and this is what I was telling myself yesterday. I was, as I I did think about him yesterday. And I was trying to distract myself with work to not think about him. But it was more of, of replaying. Because sometimes I do that. Like the dreams that come up. Like I replay them. Or, or I the scenes. I, I replay them. Because I'm still processing them. Right? And that's what I was doing yesterday. I was replaying the, the most recent dreams. Specifically the one where he's telling me. Asking, asking me. Or saying to me. In, in a very... Like condescending way, I guess. Like, do you do you know what it's like to paint a dream? Like very, like if I didn't know. And I was just replaying those scenes, what I was seeing, what I was trying to remember, certain scenes, to see if I described it right. And there's a part of me that just doesn't want to forget the details of it, the specific details, in case I miss something. But I, I remember thinking about him yesterday. And then at the end of every time I was thinking about him, I would say, but I don't, I don't know him. Like, the, like there's this awareness of like, but I don't know him. I, I really don't. I really don't. I mean, how can you know someone in three months? It doesn't make sense. Logically, does it make sense to know someone in that amount of time, you know? So, so that, yeah. Yeah. So it, I'm just, I think I'm, I'm just a little shocked. Um. Surprised at at my my reaction, and, and and just how it's sitting, like just the emotional, like it's not the same like the other dreams. My my response, my emotional response, anyways. So that's surprising me. I think. I don't know. I just want to record that because that that's that's what's been lingering for me. Just how I'm feeling about it. I don't know. We'll see. Um, on my way back from the post office, there's this um, shop on the corner. It's an art shop, art class school for youth. And there's a tarot deck that was created by um, so many number of, of art students and poets in, in, in the Bay Area over COVID. And I saw it and I was like, oh, 
because it's it's similar to what I had envisioned for it was one of my creative projects that I wanted to work on at some point was was to create my own tarot deck and um, it was actually a project that I had wanted to do with him I was I, I remember thinking about <laughs> that was back then when I thought oh we're supposed to create something together <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's create a tarot deck. <laughs> I remember writing that down, and it was on my whiteboard, and and wanting to create a tarot deck with him. <laughs> no, but it, what I saw in the window today was was similar to what I had envisioned, and I was like, oh, that's I mean, it's great for them, right? So I want to, I actually want to purchase it. So I'll include the, it's a tiny or a link in the description box below for it because it looked really neat I, I really like i took a picture of it and i was like i, I want i want this stack for sure want this stack because it just reminds me of what i had envisioned right creating one day that's all i'm gonna unpack this i need to eat i have a client at one and then school so that's all hi my name is Yubi, and in case you haven't figured it out, this footage is capturing my experience as I learn to navigate my personal spiritual awakening. Um, I am learning that this experience is unique to each one of us. Um, in whatever way we believe we are embracing living our truth, this just happens to be my journey. Um, and despite me having a graduate degree and a license in clinical social work, this by no means is intended to replace any type of mental health advice. This is just me on a personal level, uh, documenting my experience, shedding light on the truth that I am learning and discovering for myself, um, and really inviting you along for the ride. Um, if by some <laughs> magical chance you find this content to be helpful in any way, shape, or form, please click the like button, you know, share the message, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account, a personal one, and one specifically for this channel that you're more than welcome to check out. Um, I'm an open book. Um, I have also created t-shirt um, t-shirt designs. I'm wearing my favorite one right now, which is the North Node um, uh, design, um, but I have that and other things uh, that you can look at um, inspired by this process and journey, um, and I have the link in the description box as well as in the about section of my YouTube um, channel. So you're more than welcome to check those items out. Um, any type of support is you know, right? <laughs> um, again, if, if you find this content really helpful or meaningful, sometimes when we um, take that step and, and, and be vulnerable, you know, with, with showing what's inside our hearts and what's really our truth, we realize that we're much more connected um, than, than what we thought we were. And so um, I hope that um, as I'm living this experience it, and that you find some type of truth for yourself or, or find some type of um, ability to heal in some way just by relating, you know, just just by knowing that you're not alone. That really has been my goal with, with this process, um, not just um, being able to connect with others, but really for my own healing. Um, it's definitely been a therapeutic experience and a very creative one for, for myself. So I thank you and um, I wish you all the best and you know we'll see what else um, comes next for me.